everything that you have bottled up inside of you and if you want to just absolutely rip on a disc and just throw it out literally throwing it out of your body throwing it away and getting rid of all those negative vibes yes you're out there you know maybe not playing the best at disc golf but it's more than that you know you're you're being active you're being semi-healthy and yeah you're drinking you don't need a drink but you know if that's what you were going to do anyways with your buddies at least you guys are you know out getting some steps in, getting some sun maybe this is a little bit more harder than i thought i want to learn to get as as good as i can like i, I like i can be good at this you know you don't want to be that person who's trashing disc golf and then you get out on the course and then all of a sudden you're, you're terrible at it and welcome in everyone to the chain clankers disc golf podcast i'm your host quentin ferris here joined as always by horatio gonzalez we've got a fantastic episode for you guys today horatio what are we going to be talking about today today we are going to be talking about why disc golf is so gosh darn addicting um, these are just some of the things that, you know, come to mind to us. And hopefully when you're listening to this, you're just like, oh, yes, like you guys hit it. That's exactly what I've been thinking this whole time, but I just haven't been able to explain it or uh, put the words out. Hopefully some of these, you know, you agree with because disc golf is very interesting in the way how quickly people get addicted. I feel like if you want to get people to go out and play with you, you know, certain friends, if you take them out a number of times, and to like the correct courses and make them have a good time um as long as the round goes well how it like you know a fun round they're gonna be hooked and they're gonna go back out with you i literally have a buddy who uh got he was gone for a bit and during that time i got into disc golf like pretty heavily and i was like you know when he gets back i feel like he's the kind of guy like he's one of my friends at work I was like, I feel like he's the kind of guy that would enjoy this um, and would be able to benefit from it. And also we could hang out and do something. And so I was like, I'm going to get him into it. That way I have a buddy to play with pretty much. And yeah, that's kind of what happened. Like I took, I convinced him at first, you know, he gave me that now, now that's, he never was like, that's lame or anything like that, but he just thought it was kind of funny when I told him I started playing it. Um, but then I told him, I was like, you know, there's league nights and stuff and there's beer and I was able to get him to come out. And then I think the thing that helped the most was we would go out and play by ourselves, um, just me and him. And so he was able to be, um, and he was okay, I guess, being embarrassed and being able you know, during that learning phase. And so he wasn't scared. And so he was able to kind of pick it up and that competitive nature. And we'll get into some of this stuff later, but he was able to, to grow from there. But that's kind of just my example, you know, of, of why, why some of these things make disc golf so important. Yeah, I think that's a great example. And, you know, this is the kind of episode where when you do have those people in your life who are like, ah, disc golf is stupid. Disc golf's not a real sport. Ah, it's just a bunch of hippies smoking weed or, you know, oh, you know, any of those things. It Literally is. anything <laughs> where someone is trashing on something that you love. Like, share this episode with them. Tell them to get past the intro where the two dudes are just rambling on and, and get to the tips. But, like, it's truth. You know, disc golf is something that just – it's like a drug and once you really get hooked on it it's just so difficult to stop and you want to learn more and more and more and get better and better and better and you know it, it is super addicting so it's such a fun sport it's something we obviously love if you're listening to this right now you love it drop a like if you like disc golf if if anything we say you agree with drop a like if we miss something comment it down below let us know over on instagram we'd love to hear it as well before we kind of continue to get into this episode we are currently running a giveaway over on our instagram and if you're listening to this podcast right now you probably have a good chance at winning because all you have to do is like the post make sure you're following us tag three friends and just let us know that you're subscribed to the show and you can win a simon lazat meta tilt we are going to be giving it away it was uh, what we threw in our youtube video where we did a nine hole challenge super fun disc i really like it so if if you missed out on a tilt this is your opportunity to go get it go to our instagram at chain clinkers you'll find the post and yeah do those things there's also ways to get bonus entries and it's uh one of you might be able to walk away with it just real quick i don't know if we've talked much about the tilt i know we've debated it a bit 
Um, but I mean, just real quick, let's give the listeners a little quick, you know, if they haven't watched the YouTube, go check out the YouTube. You get to see it in action, but just some, some of our thoughts on the original versus the new one, kind of what you thought, what some, uh, differences, similarities you saw in it and why you like it. Yeah. We talked a little bit about it last episode as well. So I won't go too overtly detailed here, but like, I really like the tilt. I think it is a great utility disc and you have to look at it, at it from the perspective that it is a utility disc you're it's a get out of jail free card it's a it's a i need help i have got no line this is a a great example today i was kind of pinned by some trees and i had no look and i really didn't have a disc like i could have thrown up a raptor or a zeus or whatever and but i needed to literally go like 20 feet and sure, you can kind of throw one of those up, but if you throw one of those like 20 feet, it's pretty much just going to go straight and like fall straight where the tilt will go up and then it'll come back down, right? It was literally right next to the basket. So I think it's such a controllable flight that you know what you're getting out of it. You can put it on crazy angles to get more distance or to do what you need, get around objects. And, and it just stops right by the basket every time it seems like. So I really like it. Some differences between the OG tilt and the meta tilt is the plastic is a little bit more gummy and it's, uh, I mean, it's a premium plastic. What do you expect? So it, it, it feels kind of like some of their other premium plastics. Um, so that's good to feel in the hand. I think I like gripping it more than I like gripping the base plastic one, as well as it just has a little bit more fade to it. Not by much, maybe about 10, 15 feet worth if you're throwing it flat, full power, 80% full power. Um, but yeah, I think it's a great disc that belongs in everyone's bag. And it's not something you're throwing every single round, but it is something you need to have as a certain type of shot in your game, in my opinion. I was trying to think the other day, you know, after we talked about it last time, a, a fun YouTube video or some, a challenge that we could do. Because, yeah, I think it's a cool disc and, you know, it does some stuff. But I truly believe that it wasn't intended to be like a real in the bag disc. Um, but I was trying to come up with some kind of challenge that we could do to kind of put that, put that debate to the test, whether it's, you know, maybe going out to a course and putting ourselves in like creating situations that you would consider tilt situations where you would be like, ah, yes, this is a tilt shot. I'm pulling it out. And then me um, having to do that same shot with something from my bag. And I think that would be a lot of fun. And just to see if it, I would be able to be more accurate without the tilt in those tilt scenarios. No, I think that's a great idea. And I think that would be a really fun YouTube challenge as well. So I think we should, we got to put that on the whiteboard or something because that that was a good idea. That was a good idea. Write that down. Somebody write that down. Uh, If if you get, if you guys want to see that, definitely let us know because we are probably going to make it anyways, but with your support, we'll be quicker on making it, but let's go ahead. Let's get into today's podcast main theme here. And we're talking about why disc golf is so addicting and for me, starting things off, like you don't need other people to go play disc golf. You know what I'm saying? Like if you want to play softball as an adult, or you want to play football, soccer, basketball, whatever it is, like, sure, you can shoot hoops by yourself, but like, there's really nothing out there to where you can go and just play a sport by yourself primarily. And just have I don't know near as good of a time like I think that disc golf allows the capability of playing with friends playing with a group playing in competitive situations but you can literally just go out there and vibe you can go out by yourself hang out with yourself work on yourself and just play disc golf get away from everything and just escape like reality for a couple of hours and I don't think there's many other sports that can do that as good as disc golf can yeah, no, I think that's one of my favorite reasons. I'm very, um, I guess, kind of like an independent person. I am totally fine doing stuff by myself. You know, I've gone to restaurants to eat. I've been like craving some kind of food, like a food that I really enjoy and everyone's busy or just whatnot. And I'll go to a restaurant by myself. I've never gone to a movie by myself. I some I know some people that have done that. I think that's a little past my comfort level. If you've ever, <laughs> if you've I've ever done, done that, yeah. respect to you. You know, props. I know some people have. I'm not. I'm not quite that independent. But no, I've definitely you know gone to restaurants and had something to eat by myself or just 
Um, I know one time we went on a trip. Uh, it was for my wife. It was a work trip and it was San Diego and she was doing her work stuff during the day. And so I was pretty much there in San Diego by myself. So it was just on me to just go out and check out San Diego, look for stuff to do. And I freaking loved it. I was just on my own. And like, that was, I don't know, for me, that's kind of refreshing when I'm around people, it's very exhausting. And disc golf gives me that. Um, there's, you know, plenty of times I go out play with you and, and uh, my wife and uh, sister-in-law and that's a lot of fun but it's different and there's good times for all of it and league night i'll go and do that and that's a lot of fun but that's about you know two hours of of interacting with people which is just enough for me um but other times i just want to go out and be by myself and just play maybe listen to some music catch up on on books or something and still do something that i enjoy and is challenging at the same time whereas I was never able to do that with soccer. Um, I grew up playing soccer. You know, that's, that was my sport. Played it in high school. And I had friends that I could play with, but if they weren't available or if they didn't want to, it was always very tough to be able to go and do that. Um, whereas disc golf, you know, as long as I have free time, I can just go play around by myself. Yeah, and just one more point on it. It's like the escape from everything that's going on in your life, right? You had a bad day at work. You're maybe you're in a customer service job and you literally have to interact with somebody for 40 hours a week or whatever job you're at. Like you're probably interacting with somebody and your family as well. And also just like the general nature of having to be around people a hundred percent of the time. Like it's nice to just get away and just experience the great outdoors while doing something competitive. So yeah, I completely agree. I'll go and play sometimes by myself as well. And I can really, I can make those rounds as quick as I want to, as slow as I want to, I can work on whatever I want to work on. I don't have to feel like I'm holding somebody else up. I also feel like I can just be quiet for a couple of hours and just like reset myself. You know, the other day I wasn't really feeling too hot and then we went out and slanged a little bit. Now I'm feeling so much better. Um, so I just think that's something that just creates an addictive feeling from disc golf. But the next thing we've got for you guys is that disc golf can be as expensive as you want it to be, right? You can buy a starter set for 20 bucks, 30 bucks at most, get three discs. Sure, they're not going to be the greatest three discs in the world, but as we've talked about on previous episodes, you can still have success with those discs. And so you can buy a starter set for 30 bucks and you are in to the sport you're good to go. I'm not sure how much a basketball costs nowadays. I don't know how much a soccer ball costs, but like 15, 20 bucks. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you know, I, I, I really could not tell you how much one of those costs, but like you, you sure you have to do that. But like, if you want to go even go play ball golf, like it's going to cost you probably like a hundred bucks. If you're going to go a couple times a month where like disc golf, most of the time it's going to be free for the course that you go to. And you just have to pay as little, I mean, you could literally go to play it again at the youth section and buy like three, four, five dollar discs, and you could have better, even better discs than the starter sets for potentially even less money. Like, you can make disc golf expensive if you want to. I just went out and bought a Zuka cart. So, like, I made disc golf so much more expensive for myself, but that's because I chose to go out and do that, where not everyone has to do that. That can go both ways as far as, you know, how expensive or how cheap you want to make it. That addictive thing, I think, comes more into play where we've talked about this before that there's like uh, discs are sold more as a as a merch and as a collectible kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Pokemon cards thing than just something that you used to play the sport. And I think that's one thing that pulls people in is once they start playing and they see all these cool discs and these collectible, they want more, they want the prettier stuff, they want the stuff that's more rare. Some people have some insane collections, you know, they only collect like a certain plastic of a certain disc, or they collect like certain colors from a certain brand. And so people that like, you know, maybe they're not the most, I guess they're not, you know, striving to be the best players on, on the course, but they want to have like the best collect collection. It kind of gives them that feeling, you know, of 
of being able to obtain that. It's, it's pretty cool. I don't have, I have a small collection. Um, I'm not that crazy into collecting. I don't really have like having too much extra stuff that I don't really use. I know I might start taking one of my discs from my collection, maybe throwing it just because, you know, I think that's kind of what they're intended for. But I definitely know people that get very hooked into collecting and it gets expensive. I'm in some of the disc mania pages and some of the other disc golf pages and some of the prices that some of those discs go for is insane. And it's just because it's the one disc that someone is missing from their collection. They need that disc. So they're willing to pay thousands of dollars to be able to fill that. And yes, that's not, you know, playing or being on the course, but it's still that part of disc golf that gets people hooked to it. What is the disc you're thinking about throwing? The, Disc Mania Evolution. Uh, oh, that you, origin. The origin. Yeah. But it's it's their like prototype version of how Hades puts out like their prototypes or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I, I I know what disc you're talking about. Um, yeah, no, nah, and it's really one of those things where people will go out and collect discs just to have on the wall. And something that I recently did. I guess not recently. I did it quite a while ago when I started throwing my OG tilt for a while. I, I, I didn't want to throw it. Cause I was like, ah, oh, this is a collector's piece. This is cool. But then something did kind of change. I was like, man, discs are meant to fly. Like what's the point of spending 50 bucks on this disc? If I'm not even going to be able to get any use out of it. And it's just going to sit in a box. Like, I don't know. So I I've decided to kind of throw more discs as well. Um, and it is what it is, but yeah, disc golf is something that you can make it truly as inexpensive or expenses as, as you want. If you want to be that guy or gal who has the nicest grit bag or the nicest Zuka card, and you've got all the premium plastics, all the, the player tour series plastics, and you're playing pay to play courses only, you can do that. If you want to, that is perfectly fine. That is your choice to go do that. Where in other sports, you don't really have that luxury. You don't have that choice. So I really like the fact that disc golf gives you a choice at what you want to do when it comes to finances in the game. So the next thing that we have for why disc golf is so addicting is kind of sort of like you can make disc golf as difficult as you want to make it. So for example, you can go to the hardest course in town. You can go to the easiest course in town. You can be like, you know what? I only want to, my par is five. You know what? You're new to disc golf. You're, and you, your true par is five. Okay. You can make each hole a par five who's going to stop you literally no one is going to stop you from doing that um, maybe it'll kind of stunt your growth long term in the sport but you can choose that if you want to or you can be like nah bro everything is a par three like you can make disc golf as difficult or as easy as you want to if you just want to go out chillax have a couple cold ones and not really care about your score you can go do that if you want to. You can't really do that when you go play basketball, for example. Like the rims are the same height. They're, you're not really able to change anything. Like, you know, disc golf gives you so much difference and so much change. And that like anyone can throw a disc. Not everyone can hit a golf ball. Everyone can throw a disc. Like maybe it takes you seven shots on a 300-foot hole. That's okay you can choose how competitive you want to be in the sport. You can choose how difficult you want the sport to be. If you find it difficult and you don't like that, you can choose to get better. I just think that the difficultiness, the barrier to entry is so low for disc golf that anyone can get into disc golf and have a good time. Yeah. You know, there's some really good like parts to that. There's first part I'm thinking about is, I'm sure you knew these guys like in high school or, you know, in sports, just, it was just high school sports and they would make everything way more competitive than it needed to be. And it would just be so annoying because everyone's like, literally, this is just like PE basketball or soccer or whatever it was, but they were just so competitive about it that it was just annoying. And like, nobody really, a lot of people didn't want to do it. And those people just kind of ruined it for everyone else but you still kind of had to be involved and you still kind of had to do it um, because it was like a team sport or something. Whereas 
you know, disc golf, it's a solo, solo game, unless you're doing like doubles. And then even then that's different. I have never really been paired up with someone that was like super competitive and they like annoyed me by how like overly competitive they were being, you know, both people kind of want to win, I guess, just want to do well, but it's not like in those sports where it's like almost violent, like hostile situations. Um, it's a solo sport. And, you know, if you're the kind of person you're like, no, you know, we're going to do our best. We're just going to play. We're going to have fun. Um, you know, you do a bad shot. Like that's okay. We'll do it on the next one. You're that kind of person, you know, more calm. You're not super competitive, but you still want to do well. You can do that. You can be fine. But if you're the kind of person, if you were that competitive person in high school, um, you were the one <laughs> that was obnoxious. Um, and now you're playing disc golf. You can still be that person, except you're by yourself. And you might still ruin it for the rest of your card. And I've definitely played with a couple of these people, but then it's, it's as difficult for you to ruin it for everyone else, you know, and maybe someone will tell you something. And I think eventually people pick up on it and get more, uh, more private about it. You know, you can be, but you're going to be hostile or I guess competitive to yourself, but that's just the kind of person that you are. And you like putting yourself in those situations. So you, get, you can get that from disc golf. You can go sign up for all the tournaments you want. And, you know, to get that competition fix, um, you can sign up for divisions that are more difficult just to challenge yourself. So you can constantly be challenging yourself and you don't have to play down or you don't have to play with people that don't want to compete. You can play to your level that you're comfortable with. Yeah, I was going to go into competitiveness a little bit later, but I'll just speak on it. We can just speak, combine it with this and just speak on it now as well as that. Like, it's, it's the truth. Like, you know, sure, you can make disc golf as easy or as hard as you want it to be. The barrier to entry is so low. Anyone can throw a disc. Anyone can get into the sport, even if you're brand new. And I mean, Horatio, even yourself, when you first started playing disc golf, why did you get hooked in the first place? The very first time you threw a disc, what went through your mind? It was weird. Um, it was not something I was used to, but I guess just the possibility of getting better at it. I like doing stuff that I can constantly improve, and especially if it's fun. And that was a time in my life where I was looking for some kind of new hobby. Like I said, I played soccer growing up. I played varsity soccer in high school. I, uh, I've always been sort of competitive. I, I did track in high school. Um, in college, I still did some soccer and I did other other stuff where I was still kind of competitive. I've done weightlifting, powerlifting, and kind of when you get out of high school and get out of college, you kind of lose that unless you sign up for like YMCA leagues or do those kind of things, you know, um, you go play basketball with the boys on Tuesdays. A lot of the people that <laughs> that are were competitive in high school because they enjoyed that, um, I feel like they're, they, they're left with a void and, you know, cause once you get out, those organized sports kind of go away. You know, if you're listening to, and you're still in high school or something, enjoy that and take advantage of it because once you get older, it gets difficult to be in those organized sports and kind of things. Um, but disc golf filled that void for me. It was something that I could go out on myself and improve and work on and I, I'm a visual learner and I immediately just went to YouTube and started to learn as much as possible um, because I feel like a lot of stuff you know whatever you want to be good at somebody has already done it if you want to be the best you know disc golfer in the world we already have a current you know what we would say is Paul Macbeth best disc golfer in the world to us right now and so all you have to do is go and watch these guys and watch what they have done and what they do or what got them to that point if you want to become that and so for me that was the fun part is being able to take on this new sport and just immerse myself with it and become obsessed and I think a lot of people become obsessed with it because there's so much like the flight paths the discs the plastics and if you're that kind of obsessive person if you have an obsessive personality it's perfect. It's like the perfect mix for a storm and it just blew up. And I think that happens to a lot of people. 
Yeah, and also going back to what Juliana Corver said on our last interview, where she said the very first time she saw her buddy throw that disc, she fell in love with the sport and she wanted to learn how to do that. There's so many people who they either throw it their first time or they watch some of their buddies throw the discs and like, wow, that is so cool. I want to be able to do that. Show me how to do that. And then boom, you're addicted. You're into the sport because it's like, I can do that. It's disc golf. It's not that hard. Cause like, keep in mind, like a lot of the people who are trashing on you for disc golf probably think it's not that hard. And then eventually when they come out with you, they're like, Oh, well, it's not that hard. And then maybe they struggle on their first throw and they're like, Oh, maybe this is a little bit more harder than I thought. I want to learn to get as, as good as I can. Like I, I, like I can be good at this. You know, you don't want to be that person who's trashing disc golf and then you get out on the course and then all of a sudden you're, you're terrible at it. And, and you know, you're bad. I wouldn't want to be that person. I guess a counter to that is someone could be like, oh, well, disc golf sucks. I'm bad at it. You know, no wonder disc golf sucks. But like, if that's your best argument, then like you might want to just don't even bother talking anymore. But pretty much what I'm trying to say here is disc golf can be as competitive as you want it to be. You choose how difficult you want the course to be. For example, back in Manhattan, like my girlfriend and I would go play what a lot of people would consider way too easy of a course, but we loved the dang thing. And it was great to go out and play a quick nine holes in like 30 minutes and just go for ace runs and have a good time. Or we could go to the more competitive course. That's more of a tournament level course and play that way. Like there's so many different ways to play. There's so many different, uh, competing like vibes that you can have out there so yeah i just think that disc golf really allows those people who want to be competitive to be competitive and those who don't want to be competitive they don't have to be competitive right like you said earlier if you're going to play basketball with the boys on tuesday and you don't really want it to be that competitive but somebody really does or you know this really matters to someone for some reason like what are you gonna do like it's kind of hard to continue to want to go do that or even just to have a good time. Or it's just also hard to find other people who match that same level of competitiveness where with disc golf, you you don't have to worry about that. You want to be super competitive, go play league, go play tournaments. Don't play in rec, play in advanced. If you want to like, you can choose to make disc golf as competitive as you want. And if you want to play in rec, that's fine. If you're a rec level player, that's fine. A lot of our listeners are rec level players. We tailor this podcast to you guys. We tailor the podcast to people who want to get better in disc golf. So that's okay. At whatever level of competition you're playing at, that's fine. You can continue to grow yourself. So yeah, that's really all I've got for competitiveness uh, and barrier to entry for disc golf. So the next thing we have on the list is that disc golf is so active. It is so sneakily active, right? You go play, go, let's go play soccer for 30 minutes. By the end of it, I am going to be winded. I am going to be hurting. I am going to not want to move for the next three days because of what I just did to my body. I'm causing pain to my body. Whereas with disc golf, you're really just taking a sick walk in the park while throwing a disc into a basket. Like today I went and played 27 holes worth of disc golf and I'm at like 1400 calories. Like that's pretty dang good for me. The other day, like I know during a one tournament, I'm pretty sure I hit like 4,000 calories during the like two rounds that we played. So like you get so many sneaky calories and I would, and I'm not feeling it. Like right now I feel good to go. Like I could go play another nine, 18 holes right now if I wanted to, where if I played an hour's worth of basketball, by golly, by the time I get home, I don't want to do anything. I just want to go to bed. So it's so sneakily active and I feel good when I play disc golf, get to be on your feet, get to be walking around and you're not exerting your body to the point of exhaustion to where it's like, I don't want to go do this tomorrow. I can go do this tomorrow. We're probably going to go play disc golf on the day that you're listening to this. So like, that's, that's just something that's so addicting and so fun about disc golf. And also, you know, if you've got, you know, someone who just wants to go on a walk with you, just tell them to go on a walk with you and you play disc golf. That's what I did with my girlfriend at first. And now she loves disc golf. So like, it, I think the, the activity part of disc golf is just something that I, I truly really appreciate and really love. Yeah, that's definitely one part that keeps you in it. You know, a lot of these things that we're talking about, it's like, what's addicting, what gets you hooked and what gets you into it. 
but you know we can kind of talk a little bit about also what keeps you coming back and what keeps you loving the sport because i've definitely seen on you know on facebook marketplace or on some groups um people post up like entire bags of you know and their discs and they're like hey i just don't play anymore i'm selling everything i don't i don't want it i just don't play it um just not for me kind of thing and they've been playing for like a year or so and they're just giving it up and i think a lot of times it depends on the situation of either you know who they were playing with or who they were not playing with you know i feel like how we were talking about we like to play alone some people don't like to play alone some people like to play with other friends they like to you know they're more extroverts and they like to be in a group of people. And so I think, you know, the activity thing, it's awesome because, you know, you can take a spouse, you can take a friend, you can go with a group of friends. You literally can be like, Hey, just come out to the park with me and we'll drink some beers. And instead of just sitting on the couch, you know, with your buddies or on the back of your pickup or something, just drinking beers for five hours, just sitting there, you can go to a disc golf course, you know, in the summer, where you're sweating and walking and drinking beers and you're still having a good time. And yes, you're out there, you know, maybe not playing the best at disc golf, but it's more than that. You know, you're, you're being active, you're being semi healthy. Yeah. You're drinking, you don't need a drink, but you know, if that's what you were going to do anyways with your buddies, at least you guys are, you know, out getting some steps and getting some sun um, because, you know, I feel like that's something that definitely helps with, People, especially, you know, people with depression or anxiety or stuff like that. And I think this will kind of get us into our next one that we want to talk about is disc golf being so relaxing and therapeutic. I know for myself, that is definitely the case. You know, after a long day of work, if I just, if I'm just stressed out, it's been way too long and it's only like three o'clock and I already feel like I have been at work for 12 hours, 15 hours. And I don't quite want to go home yet because, you know, if I go home, I'm going to, I'm going to be grumpy or I'm just going to be in a bad mood or I'm going to take that work vibe with me home. And I don't want to do that. I'm able to go straight to the park and play, you know, either around a full round or just a quick, quick niner and relax and take some steam out. And I usually don't ever leave the the course in a bad mood um i would say that might be one of the reasons why i don't really play that many tournaments anymore i know my first year i think we played like four or five tournaments and honestly those are probably the only few times where i left a disc golf course in a bad mood just because i was upset with my score upset with my performance which that's kind of how it's supposed to be you know you're in a competitive and you don't do well you're upset with yourself because you want to do better. But even though I like the competitive part of disc golf, I've never been like that super competitive person where like, oh, it's everything. Like I'm going to die because I didn't do as well as I expected. Um, that's not really true for me. And I think that's why this year I honestly didn't play that many tournaments because I didn't really need that level. Um, I was happy with league nights and just playing with my buddies um, because I like that relaxing feeling of disc golf and if i don't put myself in those situations where i'm going to do bad where i don't really need to some people want to do tournaments so they can see how much they can improve but myself i'm going to do two tournaments this year but i think that'll be just enough for me but i've still played maybe four to five times a week this year so i played just as much as i did my first year just because it offers me that relax factor and it's able to calm me down and it's able to put me out in nature and just slow down time, I guess, and just, you know, appreciate everything and just be happy for a, a period of time that I'm not focused about work. I'm not focused about stuff that needs done at the house or anything else. I'm just outside. Yeah, I completely feel that. And it's one of those things I touched on it just a little bit earlier, but like, man, I was not feeling too well mentally the other day and just not feeling good about myself. Having played disc golf in two weeks and just, I found myself doing the same thing every single day. I found myself waking up at four 30, going, being in the office by six 30 in the morning, leaving at three 30 and then just going home and just sitting there and not doing anything. And just like feeling like 
time wasn't real and anything I doing was, was, wasn't real. And just like nothing had any meaning, nothing had any purpose and just was not feeling good mentally. And then went out and was able to play a couple of rounds and just turning everything around because like, just feel good about myself. It feels good to get up and move around. It feels good to be active. It feels good to be throwing discs again. Like it feels good to just take everything that you have bottled up inside of you. And if you want to just absolutely rip on a disc and just throw it out, literally throwing it out of your body, throwing it away and getting rid of all those negative vibes. Um, So I just think that is so nice. And it's just so nice to, be able to take that walk, put your phone down and just take everything in. Like whatever is going on in your life really isn't that big of a deal. Take a deep breath. Everything is going to be okay. You will find a way and just dis- there's something, an aura about disc golf that just heightens that in, in my body every single time I go out and play. Now, unlike Horatio, there will be, I do have plenty of times where I'll go out there and I will just not be having a good time because I just <laughs> suck at disc golf. And so then I'm just even worse off and I'm mad that I even went there. And so like, that's something that I'm definitely still working on is the, is the not every single round of disc golf you play has to be a perfect round. Not every single round right. has to be your personal best. Like it is okay to have a bad day. It is okay to have a bad shot. It is okay to mess something up that you normally don't because it, like I just said, doesn't really matter. Like it's fine. You're going to be able to move on from that. If you can, if you mess something up and you understand what you did when you messed up and you can correct it moving forward, then correct it. There's no need to continue to dwell on it and and get mad and just continue to ruin the rest of your round and the rest of your day over it. Like disc golf is an escape. It's not everything, you know what I'm saying? Um, And maybe it is everything for you and that's okay if it is everything for you. But like, I just think that for most people, disc golf is a way to get away from anything that's going on in your life and just like have fun. Yeah. Now, definitely say real quick, you know, I think we're, we're different as far as what climates we like playing in. You Absolutely. have said, you have said you're more of a winter player and you know, me, I most definitely prefer, you know, nice weather over winter, but you know, like how you were talking about, you hadn't played in two weeks, you were starting to feel bad and it was just starting to feel crummy. And I a hundred percent know that feeling. And I think that's why, like, I don't mind going out and playing. I went out and played yesterday and it was a hundred degrees and yes, it's kind of, it's warm, but you get used to it. But I so much, I care so much more about the fact that I am out there being able to play and being able to get around in than the fact that it's hot outside. Um, I'm thankful, you know, to have the free time yesterday, my buddy was able to go to be able to spend some time with him, to be able to out there and play than the fact that it's hot. Like, I don't even think about it. And same in the winter, um, when it gets dark early, and sometimes the only time I can go play on the weekends or something, even though it's really cold, but I'm just so, so tired of, you know, being stuck at work and then being stuck at home because it's cold that I care more about the fact that, you know, I want to get out there and play and feel good and let my body loose than the fact that it's cold. So, you know, if you guys are struggling or right now that it's hot and like, yes, it's going to be hot, but the more you get out there and you do it, the more you're going to get used to it. Um, And I would say it's much better to be out there and put up with that heat and, you know, the sweatiness than to put up with, you know, that, that negative energy that starts to build up, like Quentin was talking about. And, you know, you start to feel crummy day after day after day for two weeks. That takes much more toll on you than, you know, going out and playing around, even if it's not a full round, you know, maybe it's just a nine, but it's a hundred degrees, much better to do that than to not play at all for two weeks because, you know, it's too hot. Um, Just stay hydrated. And, you know, we have, that was one of the reasons I got the Zuka car because I'm able to sit down, you know, take a break. And it's much, much better on my legs. I don't get tired as much, but yeah, that's definitely one thing I would suggest to you guys is maybe focus on something else. That way you can go out and play more. Um, Cause you know, you can't do anything about the heat here in uh, where we are in Kansas. It's hot from pretty much, I mean, May until up until August. So 
you know, four or five months almost, it's hot. And so there's not really a whole lot you can do about, about that. So you can pretty much just accept it and deal with it. But there's stuff that you can do. The course that we go out to, it's pretty shady. So you don't feel it as much. Um, but yeah, that would be my tip to you guys. You know, if you're, if you're kind of avoiding the course because of climate, you'll get used to it. It's better to go out than to not, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I know for me, I just got a cart literally today while we're recording this. And, and I know it's going to, it's definitely going to help like just with the heat because just putting the bag on, taking the bag off, putting the bag on, taking the bag off. And like, I've got a super, because it's hot, I've got a massive water bottle with me, massive canteen. So that adds like however many pounds and it's only one on one side. And so it's just not feeling as good and just feeling the heat on my back because of the bag all the time. And so just, I think, I think, for me personally, moving on from that will absolutely help me have more fun um, in the heat. And like, I don't mind the being hot. Literally when we played pickleball like a month ago, nah, yeah, probably about a month ago or something. Yeah. Like that. And like, it was a very hot day and I was, was very hot. sweaty. I was dripping, but I literally did not care because like, we we're just playing pickleball. Like yeah. I wasn't constantly putting a bag on, taking the bag off, been like doing all of these extra things. I was bringing the heat in. Like, so that's not really a big deal to me. The sweatiness is not a big deal. It's just, I don't know. And sometimes just when I'm not personally feeling too good and the heat just like, it almost just like sucks the life out of <laughs> Um, but let's move on from all that not so fun talk and let's talk about something that's a little bit more fun in community. So like disc golf is addicting because it has such a great community, right? Like I'm going to use this analogy again, Horatio said earlier, going and playing basketball with the boys on a Tuesday evening, or, you know, you're, you're signing up for adult softball or whatever it is. Like you don't, get to like I don't know like I just don't think there's near as much of a community vibe there because you're having to sign up on like parks and rec or you're having to you know go and find people and you're not on the same level as you and you know it, it's just not as welcoming we're like disc golf like literally today my girlfriend and I were in a situation where there was a backup on the course and we just started playing with this guy who'd been playing for like four weeks and it was a great time everyone had a good time and I just think that if in another sport if you got into whatever with someone who's been playing for like four weeks probably not going to have as good of a time because it's just not as welcoming a, a, as a community. And there's not that community feeling in that, Hey, we're in this together. We're helping each other. Like, Hey, you, you're doing good. Like if you're playing basketball and somebody who's only been playing for four weeks is consistently missing, it's going to be pretty hard for you to be like, yeah, you got this. Keep going. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just think that disc golf is such a great community, active community on social media, tight knit, um, a lot of, a lot of good people there. Sure. There's the occasional bad guys and gals there, but a lot of good people in this community that truly are just good people want to help you give you the shirt off your back. will give you any advice, all those things. I just, I just don't think you really see that on this kind of a scale in other sports. Yeah. It's almost like a support. It becomes kind of like a support system. And, you know, to those that have been in it for a while now, I would say kind of remember how it was when you started out and I guess be the, be the player or that friend that you needed when you were starting out that, that person that's supportive and that teaches you and gives you some, you know, helpful criticism. Um, or if you go out to league night, I feel like less and less new players, novice players are maybe showing up to league nights because the level of competition I feel has gotten a little bit um, higher and so I think some people that have come out in the past they come out and maybe they were partnered up with someone who didn't make them feel comfortable or they felt like they weren't adding much value you know to their doubles partner or something and instead of the doubles partner kind of helping them out or giving them some advice or just kind of being like hey don't worry about it like you'll get better um, maybe they were upset because they didn't get a good partner and now they're not going to cash and they didn't have a good round and it was more selfish, which I think if you're going out, you know, to league night or doubles or something and you're upset because you didn't get a solid partner, then I don't know. I feel like maybe you shouldn't be, if you're just worried about cashing, maybe you sh that's not for you, you know, maybe go play on the, on the pro side. And if all you care about is, you know, cashing, go play on that side and see how it feels. Um, 
because those guys are definitely more business. And yeah, you know, I think one thing that is important for growing any kind of sport or any kind of hobby is when the veterans of that sport or hobby are inviting and helpful to the new people. That's the only way that you can grow it and keep it alive. You know, if you're not inviting and helping out the new people to grow it, then once the veterans pass on and go away from it, there's no one left. Um, and so in order to continue to grow the sport and to continue to keep the community that we have, the people that have been in the game need to remember that. And that goes from, you know, the course to Facebook. You know, if someone asks a question on Facebook that maybe you've heard a million times and maybe it is, you know, a silly question um, instead of just being a douchebag and, you know, making them feel tiny, maybe, you know, answer the question in a nice way or something or message them privately or send them some resources to be able to learn um, because that's just going to invite people to ask questions in the future. You never know when you might need help from someone. So I would definitely say take advantage, you know, if you're in this and maybe you just moved somewhere new. I would say that's very important, you know, for people that you have to move cities for work or you just have to relocate. Take advantage of the community. Find those Facebook groups. I know people here constantly are like, hey, I'm going to go play around later today or tomorrow. Who wants to tag along? And usually someone will be like, oh, what time? Or I can't come at this time, but can you go at this time? And usually, you know, they'll, mat they'll meet up and play around. And then that's a way to meet new people. You know, it's very difficult to move somewhere new and meet people of your age with your interests. Disc golf is very lucky in that sense because you can move somewhere, join a Facebook group, and just meet new people or start going to league nights and meet new friends and it makes it very good and it's it helps with that we were talking about you know that mental mental health it sucks to move somewhere and you don't have any friends you're doing going to play disc golf but you're by, by yourself maybe you're used to playing with five six buddies you know you had a group back home that you played with and now you move somewhere and you don't have any friends you don't know anyone there and you're still going to play disc golf but you're by yourself and that might even come you know more depressing than not playing at all so definitely take advantage i'm sure just about anywhere there's going to be other people who don't have friends that are going to be open to playing with you yeah and if there's if you're in a town where like disc golf really isn't popping like help make it popping right like you can be the facilitator of change. You can be the one to help grow a community. And, and, you know, I'll close a show out here on this. And the fact that, you know, we appreciate you guys, you guys are part of our community. You listening to this podcast episode, like we are trying to do just that and create a community of other people who love disc golf, who find disc golf addicting, who want to continue to get better at disc golf. And we are so appreciative of you guys. You know, we've been doing this. Th this is our year episode. We have officially been doing this for a year. And if you haven't listened to our intro, go check it out. Go listen to some of these interviews. And we've got, I know we haven't done a couple of interviews over the last couple episodes. Pros are busy guys. And we don't want to throw their game off by constantly nagging at people. That's not what we're about. That's not what we're going to do. But I can tell you, we do have some interviews lined up here shortly that I'm super excited to do. So more interviews are on the way. Um, Thank you guys so much for this last year. We want to continue to help and grow the sport in any way we can. If you have any suggestions for the show or things you'd like us to talk about, let us know. And that is really all I've got for today, Horatio. What else? That's it. You know, and like he said, thank you very much. We definitely, you know, we tried to respond to everyone on Instagram. People constantly send us messages. Even if you tell me that I suck and my takes are trash, I still yeah. respond to you. You know who you are. <laughs> if you want to tell me I'm trash, tell me I'm trash. I literally don't care. You're still getting yeah. a response. Yeah, that's what we're here for, you know. We know that we aren't the most knowledgeable in disc golf. We don't have the most experience. We're not 1,000 plus rated, but we were... I'm not yeah, even rated exactly. at all. You can't be badly <laughs> rated if you're not rated. That there's your uh, exactly <laughs> line for the for the show but you know we were the ones that were stupid enough and you know just crazy enough to be like hey let's start a podcast to help out people that are in our situation and help others learn you know it takes 
it takes a little bit of, you know, craziness and courage to do that. We knew that we were, what we were getting ourselves into that people were going to tell us, you know, you're not, you don't know what you're talking about. You guys, who are you to be talking about disc golf, but we've learned so much and every single thing that we've learned, we've passed on to you guys. And that's the main reason we have pros on. I've said it before. They are the teachers, you know, they have been in the game for a long time. We are just the, the medium through which they're talking to you guys, you know, they're, they're here chatting with us, but since we don't have the knowledge, we're bringing them on so they can teach you guys and teach us. We've learned so much from doing the show and we just want to, you know, if we haven't, we hadn't had the support that we had in this last year, we probably would have pulled the plug on the show, you know, a long time ago, but we've just seen the response from people, how much you guys appreciate it. And that's what keeps us going. And hopefully, you know, we can continue to grow and just get this, get this even bigger and better in this next year. Yeah. And you know, for all the negative comments that we get, all the negative feedback that comes in, there's so much more positive feedback comes in. So truly thank you to anyone. I, I, wish I had my phone near me I would name a couple of people off but like uh, we literally <laughs> will get messages on Instagram about just like hey just found your podcast like it's awesome it's literally just what I'm looking for like it's helped yeah. me so much like those messages are truly awesome and it keeps us motivated and keeps us wanting to grow and, and, and just inspire change and continue to help so truly thank you guys so much for this year it's been a blast can't wait for many more to come and with that said we will see you guys next time Thank you for listening to the Chain Clankers podcast. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chain Clankers and hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening to us from so you never miss another episode.